Hello and welcome to Rear Rider. My name is Ben. In this video, I'm here to have a look at the Honda 500 Rebel. This is the S edition as well, so it's going to come with some additional features over the normal one. There's also a price difference around 500 euros, but we're going to have a look at its specification, some of its features, and I'll take you around the bike. So I hope you'll join along as we have a look. I'll also discuss some competitors. And finally, I'll also give you my final thoughts on the bike. So without further ado, let's take a look at this wonderful machine. Right, as usual, starting on the front um, with um, the uh, bobber styled uh, motorcycle here. So we've got big tires on the front, there's 16 inch, we've got 41 millimeter uh, Showa forks. These are nitrogen filled as well, which is, which is quite unique. It's not something I come across very often. Uh, braking performance, it's got a single disc and it's on the right hand side. Uh, it's a 296 milli um, millimeter uh, braking disc and it's obviously got ABS as well. So um, obviously I think they've gone for the single, probably for weight, maybe. Um, something I hope they're gonna, that they'll probably look at changing is maybe going to a double disc, uh, mainly just to kind of keep the design balance. I've seen it on some of their other bikes. It'd be great to see it on this. So probably down the line, they'll probably look at replacing it with a twin disc. With regards to the rear of the bike, um, again, you've got the 16 inch uh, large uh, tire at the back, uh, single disc, uh, 246 millimeter, and then as and that's a single piston and then on top of that you have a dual dual fork uh, suspension system uh, one on the right and one on the left here all right looking at the front here so we've got our led headlamp and we've got our two side lights as well or indicators uh, they are both led as well now what's nice about this particular design i like the the, the, the circle effect of the actual lighting well, on the top you've got your standard low beam and on the bottom here you have your high beam so pretty straightforward i like the look of it it's presented well um, on the bike as well so and it suits this cowl so nicely looking at the rear here we've got the single um tail light assembly and of course you've got your led blinkers there left and right right uh, so let's get into the engine here 471 cc um, it's a parallel twin motor, liquid cooled, double uh, double overhead cam. Develops 34 kilowatts, which is around just over 45 brake horsepower. Um, RPM, I'll put on screen for you. Uh, newton meters, around 40, just over 43 newton meters, and that's made it with a six-speed uh, transmission assisted slipper clutch. Um, so decent performance for this sort of size bike um, that you're going to get out of the engine. Uh, fuel efficiency, well, first of all, the fuel tank is 11.2 litres capacity and you're looking at about 27 um, kilometres per litre. I'll put the litre per 100 on screen for you for those that need it uh, there. So a decent um, performing power plant that they've added to, to this bike. Um, it is from the Scrambler as well. So like I said, be sure to check that video at the end of the screen. But I think overall, I think they've done well um, and you've got that decent fuel efficiency as well. Two more technical details for you. Curb weight is 191 kilograms, and then the ground clearance on it's 125 millimeters, so obviously fairly low. Standard specification on the S edition. First of all, over the standard one is the headlight cowl, and you'll also get the upper um, fork uh, covers. Uh, there's also gaiters included in that as well, and of course you've got the diamond stitched uh, seat. Also, you get different color wheels in relation to the S edition over the standard model. Another feature I just want to point out on the bike is this shotgun styled 120 millimeter exhaust um, pipe here. Um, we'll, go, we'll get it started in a sec. I like the style of it. It's done in this fantastic matte black finish with this sort of uh, chrome tip. Um, I think it looks really good on the bike, but let's get it started in a sec and then we can see exactly how loud it is. Another thing to note, the ignition key is on the side of the bike here, as opposed to where it would be generically uh, close to the handlebars. So very much like the Scrambler, when you start up, you'd be starting it like that. And then you've got the ignition button here um, on this side.
Let's have a look at the handlebar setup on the 500 Rebel here. First of all, I'm going to put the ignition on. All right, we've got lighting on this side here, heater, and then we've also got indicator switches on this side. Cutter switch, hazards, and of course we have engine start on this side. Other than that, pretty straightforward. They've kept their, fit, their design very simple. That's what they've gone for in the bike. Um, and I can see it here. I love the round mirrors as well. Very nice. All right, let's have a look at the instrument cluster. They've kept the design very simple. No Bluetooth connection, no media player, nothing like that. So very straightforward. Warning lights on the bottom here. What gear you're currently in. You've got a digital speedo. Again, what gear you're in there as well. Uh, we've got fuel gauge on the top and your fuel consumption time at the top and then of course your average fuel consumption which will appear around here well we're going to look at seat height uh, seat height uh, on the rebel is 690 millimeters so really low there shouldn't be any issues in relation to getting off and on the bike uh, my bike for instance is 890 millimeters so quite substantially higher so i don't foresee any issues so, but I'll demonstrate for you. I'm a five at a five foot 11 to give you an idea in regards to my height. Right, getting on the Rebel, um, no issues at all. The handlebars are nice and low um, in relation to that. The seat uh, feels fairly comfortable, fairly nicely padded actually, um, which is great. Obviously this is the diamond styled um, seat. Uh, that's on the S edition, uh, but other than that, I think it's fairly easy maneuvering it. So if you have to move the bike, it's relatively easy. You can see where your knees are here. I'll put them on the foot peg so you can get a, a good idea where they are here. What would have been nice, I think, would have been some kind of footrests around the front here. I think that would have been quite nice, especially when you're when you're going to be cruising uh, down the motorway on something like this. But. Uh, they do the job. The foot pegs have got little rubber inserts as well. Fairly comfortable. I don't feel like I'm overstretching. Everything is within easy reach. Nice. In relation to the updates for 2024, um, there are no technical uh, changes for the bike. So that means engine uh, specification, uh, suspension, brakes, everything is identical to the 2023. The only difference is the colors that are available. So here are the 2024 colors. The 2024 color changes are matte laurel green metallic. We'll also be joined by seal silver metallic. And the current matte gunpowder black metallic is going to remain. The S edition, the paint will change to a pearl shiny black. All right, let's look at pricing. Um, the CMX 500 or Honda Rebel as we call it, um, starts at 8,499. Now that's 8,499 euros. And if you go for the S edition, it'll add 500 euros to that. So you're looking at 8,999. Um, so those prices are for Ireland. So just a, no a, a note on that. If you're an international um, viewer, make sure you check out your local Honda dealer in the country that you're currently in for specification and pricing. We're going to move on to competitors. Here are two competitors you should uh, consider when looking at the Rebel 500. Our first competitor is the Kawasaki Vulcan S to 649cc, developing about 61 horsepower, slightly more than the Honda. Good modern urban styling, uh, decent long range fuel tank, good comfort, uh, brakes pretty much on par with the Honda and um, it has a fairly easy to read instrumentation. Expect high levels of comfort and um, decent performance. Uh, pricing though is 10,950 euros in Ireland so a little bit more expensive than the Honda. Our second competitor is the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. This, is, this particular model has been going for decades, literally. Uh, decent engine performance, 648cc, developing 47 horsepower. Strong torque, though, at 52.3. Uh, expect excellent levels of comfort and the retro styling that you'd expect from that bike. Instrumentation is fairly decent. and uh, They've integrated some um, modern technologies like LED lights, ABS. Uh, pricing on the other hand, nine from anywhere from 9,400 depending on the color, all the way up to 10,000. So uh, quite a significant price difference over the Honda. 
Right, we're going to look at my final thoughts on the, the CMX500 um, or the Honda Rebel. First of all, the power plant. It's been used by Honda a lot. Um, it's, it's a very good power plant, it offers you decent performance. It's got a decent level of torque as well, mated with that six speed transmission. I'd say that's a very nice point uh, to mention on the bike. I love the, uh, the, the design, it's, it's retro styling. You know, uh, Honda, Honda describe it as simple and raw. That's effectively what they've done here. Everything, even from the exhaust, where you've got that matte black exhaust system. It, I just love the styling on it. I'd say go for the S edition, mainly because I just like the headlight cowl. I've seen it, you, know, you, you generally see it on that sort of bobber styled motorcycle. Um, also, they've gone for that diamond um, seat as well. Very, very nice. And it's brown as well. Kind of stands off a bit, even if you've got that different color motorcycle. Um, the suspension setup, I don't think you'll have an issue with. Um, again, Honda quality, the build qualities on these bikes are just fantastic you know and uh, you can see it here but the way they've put the bike together and they've kept the paintwork to an absolute minimal and again that is part of the design another thing um, Honda's warranty and again the pricing for the bike you know there are numerous Honda dealers currently in Ireland and even if you're international you'll find a Honda dealer pretty much anywhere so their dealer network is exceptionally strong and that's something I'd say is probably a good five stars and um, and even for pricing, if you're looking for that sort of bobber styled motorcycle for A499, if you go for the normal one, it's exceptionally good value. And of course, you've got that A2 license compatible as well. So if you're just getting into motorcycling, and you're not sure which bike and then you're on the sidelines and you think, I like the look of a cruiser, this could be the bike for you. Special thanks to Tiger and his team here at Moran's Bike Shop. If you're in the market for a Honda, be sure to contact them. I'll leave their details in the, in the description. They're also for Honda servicing. If you're currently in Ireland uh, near the town of Drumshambo and Country Leitrim, consider them for any servicing options and they service some of the bikes as well. So be sure to contact them. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've provided you with enough information. If there's anything I've missed, be sure to check out the description for more, for more information. Have a fantastic day wherever you are. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.